yeah, I wasn't recording. So hopefully now, <laughs> now we're recording. And like I said in the last one, if you don't want your um, face on the video, you can shut it off, but I'm not going to the Brady Bunch view right now anyway. Sorry about that. I have to get better at it. So we're gonna be sharing your ideas in a Google Doc. I'm gonna, mm, let me think of the best way to get this to happen because we're gonna do this for every class. If you're in the matrix, the Google Doc that has, the Google slide that has the matrix, if I hit escape here, it should shrink it down and you're in the blended PD schedule, I'm gonna put the link in the chat box. I'm gonna go to this slide and you'll see, click here, this is where the collaborative document is. So I'm gonna right click on it. I'm going to copy the link address and I'm going to vomit control V into the chat. So here's the link to the Google Doc. So you guys can hop in with me. And let me go to it myself. So you'll notice this one is actually going to be shared with KCC, Quashnet, and MMHS because at the end of the week, when we do our wrap up and kind of look back on what we've learned over these two weeks, I wanna be able to see all three schools. I said in the last session that you never know if you'll see an idea at a different school, even though it's a different grade level, you may find that there's an idea that you can customize for your own classroom, your own students, your own situation. So under this KCC part, what I'd like to do, I'm hitting down just to give you some space. This is gonna be interesting because right now there are, I don't even know how many people are in here. Where do I find that? Oh my goodness, there's so much to click. I guess it doesn't matter. There's a lot of you in here. Um, I'd want you to think about maybe what you've learned about organization or setting up your room or logistics, which is my favorite topic. Um, any online tools that you've found or websites or resources. Some of you might be in Facebook groups. What is it that you've found or learned or discovered this summer that you're like, I think that this is awesome and I'm gonna share it or has anybody else tried it? I'm wondering about it. I'm gonna give you some time to kind of type in there. So if you are in the document, which I can see some faces are coming in, the link is in the chat. You can click on it, there we go. Jen's going at it, there we go. Um, go ahead and jump in and let's start to share some of it. If you have something that you wanna share out loud, I, oops, I'm still letting people in. If you wanna share something out loud, I'm willing to give that a try as well. So we'll try and do it one at a time. If you're not speaking, make sure that your microphone is muted because that will help with background noise. And again, this is the KCC um, brainstorming class, but anybody is welcome to any class. And like I said, I'm recording them. So I feel like I'm talking too much. So if you want to share out loud, you can. If you want to share and type, you can. I don't see a link. So I'm going to put the, oh, if you came in after I put the link in, then you wouldn't see it. I'll put it in again. There we go. Who? Susie? Yes. Russell, can you hear me? I can. I'm waving. Um, but I, I can't hear you on my desktop, so I've got you on the clear touch. Um, I stopped taking the modern teacher class because I was so lost in the vocabulary. So what I did was I made a list and wrote down the terms I didn't know. And then I went back to Google and YouTube and everything and went and just looked everything up. And I think that's part of the problem with the modern teacher is that a lot of us don't have the background terminology. Yep. So, uh, you know, like this morning when he started talking uh, and, and Hope started, I immediately did everything our kids do. I went right back to seventh grade math class and I just had to stop. I called Sue and Shay just for, uh, you know, just to get it out of my system. But one of the things that I found really helpful was to put modern teacher aside and realize that we can do this. And that I started looking up things on YouTube. Um, I learned how to do a Bitmoji class. You know, I made my own little classroom. And just, if you don't know, put modern teacher aside and just look stuff up. You know, is it use what you know, use the people you know, but modern teacher presented it in such a way they assumed that we had background knowledge that we did not. 
So that was one thing, and it, 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 talking about it helped me now just to realize to go back, look stuff up that I don't know, and realize that you're gonna, what you do is gonna be connected to Modern Teacher, but at the same rate, very separate. You're doing it for you, you're doing it for your students. Exactly, oh, I totally agree with that. You're not doing it as an assignment for Modern Teacher, and that's hugely important to know. And I agree, when we took that first class for Modern Teacher, I knew immediately, like, wow, this is, this is a big ask for a lot of our teachers. I can't tell you how many of you say, Oh, I don't know technology. Oh, you know me and technology. Oh, technology and I just don't get along. Like so many of you say that. I wish you all knew how many of you said that. It would make you all feel a lot better. But I also see from that big umbrella of I'm in your classrooms and as much as you have that belief in yourself that you don't have technology skills, you do have a lot of things to draw on. Mary, just saying that you went to YouTube and started learning how to do things, I don't know if that would have occurred six years ago when I first started here. So your skills have all developed. So if jumping into modern teacher feels like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what they're talking about, I still think that's okay because it's gonna, it's gonna come as you need it to come. So don't stress if it's something that's feeling out of your reach right now, it's gonna come closer and closer and closer. Um, I love your idea. If you get a chance to type it into the brainstorming thing, I think that's a great idea. Uh, Mary, or if you put it in the chat, maybe someone can copy and paste it in if you're not in the doc, because I know you're on your um, clear touch. It's hard to work on that, but I love that. Jamboard versus Padlet. Jamboard I've never used before. We don't have it enabled on our Google um, domain. So it's something because it requires a lot of parent permission. Um, student privacy issues, so we have not allowed it. So it's basically Padlet or Padlet. Padlet, I think, allows a few Padlets for free now, uh, unless you had a Padlet account from years ago. If you did, you can go in and kind of erase some of your Padlets and use them again for new purposes. Um, flip classroom model, reduce in-person time teaching for the whole group, yes. I used to call it spinning the classroom because my students didn't have devices at home when I was doing what they were calling the flipped model. I would create videos even though they didn't watch them at home. I'd say, okay, like this is the video today for whatever. We're learning how to reduce fractions. And I'd make a video and I'd play it right in front of the kids with me standing there because video me is way cooler than me me. They'll listen to me on a video better than they will listen to me standing there in front of them or walking around and tapping on their desks or kind of giving them the hello are you listening to me um, so being able to create those videos and play them even if your students are there is a great way to be able to deliver instruction and it gives you basically an, an extra teacher in the room because teacher you is on the screen and then you you is walking around the room so we'll be talking a lot about flipped or I call it spinning your learning jump in if you want to because I don't want to talk the whole time <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say, um, spinning, I like the spinning the classroom too, but I think the flipped classroom or spinning the classroom, I think a lot of people are concerned what it's going to look like to teach a lesson to kids in both places. So I think that's one of the things I'm thinking is don't use that time to teach, you know, don't worry about teaching a lesson in the front of the room and having the video set up and teaching the kids like pre-record that. And even if you don't, you know, show it whole group, like three kids can be watching that while you work with a small group and then your kid at home, your remote kids can watch it you know when you're not working with them I think it'll just go a lot further yep, yep absolutely I had somebody else ask about the bitmoji thing um, I found that to be interesting like the, that your bitmoji on your phone is dressed wonderfully but your bitmoji on Google is like still in its tank top and whatever um, so I'm trying to learn that myself, like how do you change the clothes, but it looks like Jamie's point, putting in some advice in there, which is good. Mike, were you just saying something? Go for it. I was just gonna say, I was gonna do the flipped classroom as well. And I think it blends in nicely with the whole idea on our learning plan. Is that what it's called? Learning plan, yeah, landing page learning plan. Um, for the practice part, so that the kids who are at home would know to go there to click on the video and the kids in class could watch it and then maybe the next day do the 
um, active learning from the practice with both sets at the same time. Exactly. I agree. And we'll get better and better at that too, being able to think ahead of what it is that you want to create for a video. And then it's, it's less pressure. Another way that I would do it sometimes is I would do a small group. So I would do it on the rug, which won't be an option this year, but I would do it and not have the kids' faces in it, but I would have, say, my iPad or whatever it was that I was using to demonstrate the lesson. Sometimes I'd use a whiteboard, but I would record it as I was teaching it to a small group of kids so that it wasn't overwhelming. And then I would use that video later on to be able to introduce it to other students or to other groups or to be able to put it on my website so that it could be accessed at home if parents needed to help with homework. So sometimes I was able to capture my live teaching, but not in front of the whole group, which is it's it's not easy to do. It's, a, yeah, <laughs> not easy at all. Pocketful of Primary on YouTube has amazing videos on Google resources. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for the link too. Share and save as a PDF. Oh, we're talking about how to do your Bitmoji and being able to save it so the kids can't mess around. I agree, let me keep letting people in, there we go. Um, we have a class later, I think it's this week on creating a Bitmoji classroom. Is it required? Absolutely not. But I know it is a hot topic right now. There's a Facebook group for people creating Bitmoji classrooms. Some of you have already done them and shared them with me and have blown me away. So I'll, I'll be sharing some of the ones that other people have made. We'll share some ideas on how to make them. Um, it it's, can be used instead of a landing page. So a Bitmoji classroom is basically a fancy landing page. But again, if any of this is overwhelming you and you're like, oh, I don't even know what a Bitmoji is, then don't worry about it. It's not something you have to worry about now. We can create a very basic um, Bitmoji. A bit. <laughs> we can create a very basic landing page. Like there's simple business cards out there and there's fancy business cards out there, but they all serve the same purpose. And that's, we'll build what works for you. So don't let that stress you out. Comparison is the thief of joy. So if you are comparing yourself to others, or if you're comparing yourself to what you were able to do before when we had a normal teaching experience, then you're doing yourself a disservice. It will be hard to overcome that. Try and focus on what your strengths are and what you are able to do and know that you're going to get better at it. I'm seeing more ideas come in. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. This is really weird. Jump in. Can I ask you a question? So, you know, I was talking to Sean and I know he has ordered Chromebooks for a KCC. Uh -huh. um, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around how we're going to do this because I know they're not going to be in and set right away. Um, but will we be able to use what's in the building, what we already have, and how can we plan? Um, for using technology, like how soon? Right. I believe that, because I haven't seen what the inventories are at all the schools, I know that we pretty much decimated um, Quashnet's inventory. Sorry, my daughter has been texting me all morning. Um, oh, goodness, I didn't mean to open it. Huh. Oh, my goodness. All right. Um, I believe that KCC's inventory is still pretty much intact. We didn't roll any of those carts over to Quashnet. So I believe that you have at least what you started with last year, where they all are and what that is at right now. I'll have to check with Sean to know better. We've ordered a lot of Chromebooks at different times. Some he ordered in March and April, and then we got the go ahead to order more in June and then more in August for all different reasons and different cohorts of people. And right now, if you were to jump into the tech director group, there is thousands of emails among us talking about when are your Chromebooks coming? What do you have for an ETA? When are those Chromebooks coming? So we're all waiting for them to come in. How many have come in? How many are here? How many are due here soon? Sean would definitely have a better idea about that than I do. That was his. his so day. technically, first and second grade may be okay mm -hmm. to, to dig right in. I, I wanted to start right away just in case we had to go remote. The kids would be already familiar with the landing page and all that. Yep. So they would know what to do. Um, 
And then my second question is clever. So they're all going to need clever badges, right? Yep. And I know that can't be done till power school is all set and all that. So yeah. how soon before? Yeah. I know. Open? That's a great question. Is it realistic to think you could use technology the first week of school with the kids? That's my hope. Um, is it realistic? I think that it is. I don't think that a one-to-one -one is going to be realistic that first week, but our norm is going to be realistic that week. So what they'll have at home, I'm not sure. Some of them already have devices at home because they borrowed them from Quash during the shutdown. So we'll have a better idea of that as you get your class lists and find out what they already have. Um, I know I'm sounding very vague, but some answers right now are that's all they are. <laughs> Because they can't share. Right. Right. From week to week, because you'll have a different group every week. You can No, I'll have the same kids for 34 days in a row. That's right, too. You will. They would bring them from their classroom. No, you go into their no, classroom. No, I'm going to their classroom. Yeah, so that's what I'm just wondering. Yes. And they can't share sitting next to each other. But they should have enough for them to have one-to-one -one in the class. Because if there's only like seven to nine kids yeah. in the class, they right. should be able to do it, right? Yes. And then just wait on kindergarten because I guess they're getting touch ones. Yeah, they're getting the touch Chromebooks. They're so lucky. And so, so if I had iPads, could I use those with kindergarten? I don't see why not. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. And Clever will come out as soon as we have Power School all smoothed out once they have all the different classes and the schedules and then we'll be able to do all of the rostering. So Clever and Seesaw, and there's a lot of things that are just waiting to be able to be rostered. IXL, um, a lot of them are waiting for those rosters. Right, so I talked to Sean about that. So he was saying like now with the Clever, like Seesaw, the kids aren't gonna be able, have to use the badge to sign in. Is that right? Um, it'll just be connected with Google so that it'll be- It should be. Or, well, they still have to. Yeah. I don't think that they'll have to use the badge, but I would plan on it. There might be a bumpy period where we still have to use them. Trying to figure out all the different ways that the different programs talk to each other is, is pretty daunting. They don't all speak the same language. So that's right. what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm also trying to figure out how you can each build your own clever portal. Like Kendall, my daughter, the one who teaches third grade, she has her own clever portal where she can put her own tiles in there for yes. her class. So I want you all to be able to do that. So that's something else that we're working on. And um, the last question. <laughs> with the, sorry. Oh, um, so. With the seesaw, can we have our, can we have our um, remote learners just turn in things through seesaw versus Google Classroom? I think that's fine. Yeah, we're because it seems seesaw. like a good connection. Okay, yeah. thank I you. Think whatever works best. Um, seesaw is something that we're paying for now for for Coombs, so I would say that that makes sense. The um, seesaw rosters. Who right now I have over two thousand students at KCC because the same student. Let's say it's Susie. There might be a Susie B, there might be a Susie Brooks, there might be an S Brooks, there might be a Susie spelled wrong. So there might be five of me in Seesaw. So I'm having to go in and assign a student ID number to all of them to take it from 2000 kids to say 400 kids. So right now that's what I've been trying to work on. I'm about 75% of the way through, but you might um, that's also going to allow us to, to kind of connect all of their portfolios too. So that's getting there as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything new in there? Any other brainstorms? Come on, people. I know you spent all summer looking at stuff. Are there any places that you go to? Or like, I know. Um, Susie. Go for it. I wanted to say that I did share in that document. There's two websites that I've been using to create interactive Google games. Yep. Um, there's two sites that have free map manipulatives. So like 10, like, um, 10 frames and base 10 and counters all free. Yep. I think that, you know, when people are saying, you know, what do we do about manipulatives? This is really cool. If they start playing around with it, they will really like it. That's awesome. Did you put it in the chat? I put or it in the, in the 
document, I can put it in the chat too. I meant to say the document. That's awesome. Um, we still have time, so I, I will normally stop at 10 minutes of the hour just so you guys have a break between me and whatever's next on top of the hour, whether it's another class or what have you. But you still, if, so if you have questions, even not ideas, if you have questions instead, you're welcome to ask them to kind of ease your, ease your worries. I actually do have a question for you, Susie, but it's more of like a me and you talk. I don't want to take up everybody's time. Okay. But um, if we have time to chat at some point, uh, I just, I'm new teacher, so I don't have a website already. Yep. So I wanted to talk to you about maybe doing that and having the landing page um, when I'm not taking up everybody else's time. Right, that's fine. But I think it's a good question for everybody because I know that a lot of teachers created websites within the last couple of years in Google Sites. I would say in order of priority, I would start first with your landing page. That's going to be the, the most important because that's what we're, we're going to link to on the website that I showed earlier in HOPES training and Patty showed it yesterday. Um, and then the second most important is probably your playlists or your learning plans, whatever it is that you're going to put together so the kids know what to do either while they're with you or not with you or at home or so parents can see it. And then on top of that, if you want to do a website that holds all of these things, you're more than welcome to, but don't let it be an added stress if it's something that you're like, oh gosh, I just can't get to it. It will build over time. Google Sites is pretty easy to get in there and start building things. So it's it's whatever works for you. Don't feel like you have to do that. But if you wanna do that and you need help, I think one of the sessions that I'm doing is on Google Sites and it will give you the basics of how to get that up and running. So I'm happy to help too. I don't wanna make anyone feel like they have to go one way or the other. You can go either way. I just want to. I want to. I loved having a classroom website when I was teaching. It was just an awesome way to be able to connect with families. I'm trying to, oh, you, yeah, the Simple K webinars, Michelle just put in there. I'm trying to read the chat and all of it, but the Simple K webinars have been awesome. I have taken a lot of them and I've stolen a lot of their slide decks that I'll put into these different sessions so that you'll be able to check them out yourself if you want to. Um, but they're about a half hour. Most of the Simple K free stuff is previously taped so you're not listening to the presenter live but at least it's a way to get something else to learn they um i'll often have it playing in the background almost like a radio station on my computer so i'll have that open but i'll be answering email it's just another way for me to take in new information or maybe learn something new so those simple k webinars um michelle do you want to put that into the google doc and if, if you can't, if you're on a device that's not behaving, if someone else can write that in there for her, that would be awesome. I'm trying to read the chat. How do I get documents to reading these information? Good question, Allie. So, Oh, I'm in the right spot. I don't know why I needed to open that twice. Ooh, a little dead air right now on the on my broadcast. It's hard to do all of this. We're going to be superheroes by the end of the school year. I am telling you. Hopefully, I'll lose weight just from all of this. Ooh, <laughs> internal energy, crazy. There you go, Amy, you're putting it, because I don't see it. Oh, the free, now I do, it's right in front of me. Durr, there it is, the free math manipulatives. And if I find others, I'll put them in there too, like Shepherd Software, I like some of their tools that they have. Um, there's a lot of online things that they can interact with. One thing to remember when it comes to online tools, on a Chromebook, Chromebook doesn't have Flash, which some of you are like, I don't even know what that is. Flash is like a programming language that you use on computers that make it easy to click and drag and play games and then make animations. 
Flash works really good on computers or laptops, but on a Chromebook, which is basically a mobile device, I know it looks like a laptop and it kind of behaves like one, but a Chromebook essentially is a mobile device. It's not designed to be this, you know, workhorse. So Flash based websites don't always work well on a Chromebook. If you come across a tool, especially if you're using like your home computer or your classroom computer and it works awesome and then you try it on a Chromebook and it says, uh-uh, this is Flash, this is not going to work, I can often enable it. I need to know the website, what it is, and I can put it into our system in the background so that when you go to that site on a Chromebook, it looks at our permissions and says, oh, wait a minute, this site is allowed. So I would need to know what the website is to be able to allow that site to run Flash. That's something that I'm glad I'm being recorded because it's very hard to remember that. And you might not remember it now, but you'll find some amazing tool and then you'll go to use it on the Chromebook and it won't work. And then you'll hopefully say, oh, what did Susie say? So send me an email what that tool is that uses Flash and I can usually get it to work on the Chromebooks. More free math manipulatives. That's awesome. That's awesome. Still trying to read the chat. To get to the doc, let me put the um, link in again, Michelle, if I vomit that in there. Click on that link, Michelle, and see if it brings you in. How's everybody doing? I'm quiet, but that doesn't mean you have to be. You can ask questions if you want to. Um, I'm going back through the chat just to see. Did you guys all get the link? I'm reading so many statements that you said you didn't get it or didn't see it coming up in the Zoom chat. Hopefully you are. I didn't get it at first, but I just went to your schedule and clicked on it. Got it there, okay. That'll be one of the things that I'll have you do at the beginning of all of our sessions is to bookmark stuff. I think that that's probably gonna be one of the biggest challenges is trying to keep all of your bookmarks straight. Like I have to go here for this and here for that and bring up this slideshow and bring up that Google Doc and bring up this website. Um, being able to keep yourself organized starting right off the bat, I think will be hugely important as we make our way through the school year. And how you decide to organize your bookmarks is entirely up to you. If I'm on my, um, my school computer, not my home computer. So like this one doesn't have a lot of bookmarks. I just have a few but my home computer, I could scroll through thousands of bookmarks. So it is not efficient at all. So I'm trying to be more mm, um, careful in how I'm going to be organizing my bookmarks here. The good thing about Google is that when you type in to find something on your um, device, like if I were to open a new tab and I'm looking say for the Chromebook repair spreadsheet because I have to access that all the time, um, I believe that I, if I type in issue, of course, an example I'm going to use, oh, wait a minute, it might be showing behind the chat. No, it's not coming up, but usually it will come up because it's a recent document. Not the best system for me, so I need to be able to come up with something that's going to organize my bookmarks. The class that's tomorrow on file management will go over a lot of that just to be able to get used to uploading and downloading and getting a picture from one place to another or being able to save your bookmarks or being able to get things up into Drive and down from Drive and from one computer to another or to have it accessible on your ClearTouch and your Chromebook, that type of stuff. I know that that can be very overwhelming. Um, let me go back to where we were. It can be very overwhelming, so that's what I'm hoping to, to ease some of your worries with that tomorrow. Does anyone have questions about any of the courses you saw listed to ask about what they're covering or what they'll contain? I had people that said, could you create an index for all of your courses? And I can't. 
<laughs> I don't have enough time to prepare for them and create an index. I am trying to do an overview. I did a description for each of them, but um, I'll, but I don't have like an index or an outline for all of them because there's so many of them. I want to be able to improve them as I plan ahead. So like the ones for the end of the week, I haven't even started yet. I am working on them as I get closer to them because then I have a better idea of what you all need as well. And I don't want to have any like energy expended on things that you don't need. I'm still looking at the chat. Simple K-12, thank you. They are awesome. I've probably taken 10 of their courses this summer. Everybody's so quiet. I don't think I'll be saying anything amazing from now until 12 o'clock. <laughs> if I do, I'll keep the recording on. You can always go back and watch it. But I don't ever want to keep you here if there's other stuff that you can get done. If you have a question or if you want to stay and you ask something that you feel like the whole group doesn't need to know, you can. You can ask me, but feel free to zoom off and get your lunch ready. And uh, I will see you next time. It makes a sound when you leave, that's heartbreaking. <laughs>
just realized that if you have people in the waiting room, you can type a message to them as well. I don't know how it gets to them, but it said everyone in, when you're in your chat, it has everyone in meeting. And then it, when I had someone in the waiting room, it said everyone in waiting room. So I wonder if there's a way to send like a link while they're waiting. Like that first slide that I made that said like mute your microphone and I don't know, I'll have to think that one through. I'm still learning. I'm still talking to myself. <laughs> Ooh. Move some of these up. Combine those. We get our link to Simple K12. Here. And copy. I'm talking to myself. No, I'm not going in. I just wanted to copy the link. Go here. Simple K12. So many windows, I can't see my. There we go. In a moment. Why? There we go. the type here as we already have. If you guys have any questions, don't, don't be afraid to jump in and say hi. Our next session is the high school brainstorming. And that starts at one. So I'll probably go offline from 12 to one. There we go. All right. Am I on the wrong one? Learning. I did. It opened it on the wrong one. How did I do that? That's the other one. Close that. Go here. Okay. Brainstorming. Address and vomit. There we go. Close this one. I can then go over the top. Talking to myself gets me through the day. Don't judge. That's there. Okay. So that's good. And then here I need to do So now if I go back here, I'm going to stop recording because I have forgotten to do that. But nothing amazing happened. Um, more? 
stop recording.